preservation and we are working with Dominique for quite a while and we are trying to extend the couple criterion to these metals. And we thought that if it doesn't work properly with the couple criterion, maybe it would work well with the face field method. So we went to the face field method and I worked with John Dolgo and Gary Hu. Ian Chen is the Chinese name, but he's Gary. And we tried to extend that the, the theory to the phase field model and see what happens. So let me tell you what is the outcome. But before, I would like to uh, acknowledge that the research has been supported by the Israeli Science Foundation and, of course, by the new frog IT and So if I uh, go on. So everybody knows a couple of criteria, so I will not go over the details of the couple of criteria. And the, 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 what I would like to emphasize is that in order to apply it to a brittle material, one would need, of course, two material properties, G1C, which depends on K1C, and sigma C, which is something which one would measure. That, that, this is for a brittle material. And if you apply, you take these two uh, uh, quantities which are material properties into consideration, you would be able to find out what is the force that you have to apply so that you will have a crack initiation at the V-notch. And if the V-notch is sharp, you can have some very nice results when you would compare these two experiments. So if you would do experiments, and we did experiments on a MACO and PMMA and graphite, you would be able to show that under mode one, this criterion performs quite well. Then, after we have done that, we collaborated with a, a, a Dominique, and we said, what happened if there is a radius at the crack tip, but the radius, not at the crack tip, at the V-notch tip, but the radius is very small. So we could take that into consideration, and we could improve our a, a, a prediction. So what you would see here in this, in this figure, you can see here the opening angle, the V-notch opening angle, and here you will see what is the predicted uh, uh, occurrence of fracture, and the points are the experimental observation, and you can see that we can predict quite well what happens if you have a brittle material with a V-notch under load one, and you have also a, a, a radius. Time passes by, 2006 and 2007, we extended this criterion to the mixed mode. So if you have mode one and mode two, and you have a brittle material, you can take into consideration, again, only two material properties, G1C and sigma C, and then you can still predict quite very well what happens under a mixed mode loading, and also Alberto talked about that this morning. And we said, okay, we're happy with that, we can proceed on. And then we went to 3D. And in 3D, you have mode 1 and mode 2 and mode 3, and we tried to use the couple criteria, and we published a paper in 2016 with Bridget Mittelman, and we showed that if we do experiments on graphite, PMMA, and MACOR, and alumina zirconia, you can still predict well what happens with the couple criteria, but we had a problem that the energy release rate criterion, the G1C, did not work well for mode 3. So we left that aside and we said we should go on and try to see what happens if we are talking about metals. So it's very nice that we're talking about brittle materials, but there are a lot of materials made of metals. So we went on and we tried to find out what happens with metals. And I hope that will go on. So the question is, if we have a metal, which we call that quasi-brittle, so we have a very small plastic zone at the V-notch tip. The question, can we use the coupled criterion for brittle materials in order to predict how far away would our predictions be if we use the coupled criterion for brittle materi materials when we have a very small a, a plastic zone at the V-notch tip. So we did a lot of experiments. We manufactured specimens. Let me try this. OK, great. So we manufactured specimens, they were all made of ASTM, AF, a, a, ASI 4340, and we performed experiments according to ASTM E813 to measure what are the material properties. I want to remind you, we need to get sigma C, 
Now, for this material, would it be sigma yield or would it be sigma ultimate? We will talk about that. And the next thing we wanted to do is find out for that material what could be k one c. So we performed experiments to obtain sigma c and k one c. And then we said, let's take these specimens with various B notches, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. And I'm very glad that we had a discussion about the IC before, because we, have, we did the IC very close to that notch tip. And we wanted to find out what is the plastic zone which is being generated when we load the specimens. And we did these experiments, and you can see very clearly here that we have a linear response almost until fracture, and we were very happy that this is what happens. So we did all these experiments, and then we applied the criterion. So we applied now the coupled criterion. We have mode one, and in order to apply the criterion, G1C and sigma C are material properties. K of W depends on the material properties and the notch angle. And we can compute that. These are the values. Alpha is the uh, exponent of the singularities. These are the values which we can obtain. We plug that in here. We made finite element analysis, high order finite element methods. We can compute these values very easily. And then we can compare the numerical uh, uh, prediction with the exponent. So let's see, let's see the results. What we see here is the load to fracture, and what we see here is the Villoch angle. So we have 30, 60, 90 degrees. And when we apply this criterion, what we find out is that the red dots are the predictions, and the blue dots are the experimental values. Now, figure out that this is about 6,000, and this is about 13,000. Which means that as you go away with the Vinod triangle, you open the Vinod triangle, the plastic zone increases. The further and further away you are going from the, of course, the brittle criterion. So we said, let us compare what we got here. And these are the differences between the experiments and the predictions. And let us compare that to what happens when we had PMMA or when we had the aluminum zirconia. You can see clearly that there is a huge difference. All these experiments are available in this paper, which has just been published in Engineering Fracture Mechanics. So we have a bunch of results there. Anyone who wants to take a look at that is very welcome. Then we said, maybe it's a problem of the coupled criterion. Let's, chart, let's stop, try to uh, predict using the phase spin model. So we went and we used the phase spin model, the 81 of the phase spin model. And in order for the phase spin model to work, we had to calibrate this uh, uh, L, uh, the regulariz re regularization parameter. So we said we will calibrate that on the 30 degrees, and then we will predict what will happen for the 60 and 90 degrees. We calibrated on the 30, and we opened the uh, V notch, trying to see if we get better results. Well, surprise, we got the better results. Which means that if one tries to generalized only by looking at the a, 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 a brittle criterion. If one wants to predict what would happen, probably there is some kind of a problem. For 30 degrees, we are more or less OK. But as you open the angle, then, of course, one has to take into consideration the plastic zone. So if we want to take into consideration the plastic zone, we have to find out what is the plastic zone. And that's why we need the DAC. So you have two very, very uh, good cameras with very, very high resolution. And you know how to put a good pattern. Then you are able to see what happens with the, uh, with the uh, plastic. So if you want to see what happens, then the, 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 the light blue shows you the plastic so that it, as it evolves once you apply the load. So we have these measurements. And now the question is, how can we use all of what we are having so that we extend the a couple of criteria. I just wanted to show you how an experimental an experiment look like, looks like because one would think, okay, a metal will deflect and then will break, but it doesn't really happen. So watch closely on the experiment, and, you, and then you will see what happens. That's the specimen in the middle, and that's how it breaks. Okay. 
So it looks like a very, very brittle fracture, but there is this plastic side. Okay. So now we want to have something which is very simple. We don't want to go and do an elastoplastic analysis, which is very time consuming. And we want to take into consideration the plastic zone. In order to do that, Dominique had a work a couple of years ago on trying, instead of using a constant E, to adjust the E in the plastic zone so that the a, a, a stress will not go to infinity. You will have the strain go to infinity, but not the stress. So if you would multiply the strain by this kind of young modulus, when you take the beta, with the right number, then you will find out that the stresses would not go to infinity. You will somehow simulate what happens to the elastic zone. So we have to calibrate this beta. And let us assume that we have this E, which changes with R, only in the plastic zone. So once you are outside of the plastic zone, you are, again, elastic. So when you are in the plastic zone, then you change your E in this manner. <coughs> okay, so now if we do that, we are still, we need to find out three parameter stuff. It's not only two parameters. We have to find out one parameter, what is the plastic zone just before the specimen fractures. This is one parameter. The other parameter is the stress intensity factor. If we are looking at the specimen away from that very small notch, then you can apply an elastic analysis and you can compute the stress intensity factor if the, the plastic zone is very small. And the third one, of course, is L, which is the parameter at which the, the, the stress criterion and the energy criterion it works. So since I don't have much time, I will go very briefly on how to do that. So you have an outer expansion, you have an inner expansion. You, in the outer expansion, you assume that the V-notch exists, but you have no plastic zone. However, you do then a change of coordinates. You zoom in into the V-notch tip. You take it 1 over D, and the D, which you don't know what it is. Then, in the inner expansion, you end up with a circle of a radius of 1. And then, after you do all of this matching asymptotics, you end up that you have three different equations. One equation second equation, third equation. You have three equations, and these three equations are coming from the matched asymptotics. It is not easy to explain that in three minutes, but yes, it can be done. So then you have three equations to find out the three unknowns. So we said we have D, we have A1, and you have L in order to find out where we <coughs> fracture. Where do we insert the knowledge on the plastic zone? The D. The D is the knowledge on the plastic zone. And we have to find exactly what is this D at which the specimen will fracture. But we have only two material properties. We have K1C and we have sigma C. How do we get the D? We need more information. The more information would be obtained if we are doing one experiment, let's say with 30 degrees, and we measure by the DAC the plastic zone, then we can get information about the plastic zone for which we can compare so that will have three pieces of experimental data so that we can work with this uh, criteria. Uh, uh, another issue, which is a small issue, and I'm coming to an end, another issue, which is a very small issue that we have to discuss about, uh, is the fact that this beta, for example, this beta controls how the stress goes to a, a, a finite value. And we have to also calibrate that one, but I don't have the time to talk about it. So if you take, if you take and apply these methods, you change. You, we do, uh, Dominique did some a, a, a numerical a, a analysis, and if this is what happens for the uh, <coughs> uh, uh, prediction, you see in red the predictions for the uh, the couple criterion. If you would use the methods which we showed previously, which you see a clear, a, 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 how should I put that, much better results compared to the brittle a, a case. So I will stop here.
and by saying that we have done a preliminary study on the extension of uh, the pilot, pilot structure mechanics separate material, and we are planning a new set of experiments on a different material so that we can uh, check that these methods work well. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you.